Welcome to Daring Business Hours. My name's Christopher. And my name is Michael. Yeah. So what's up, Dad? This is my father, for all you who don't know. This is Michael St. Germain. Long time uh, listener, viewer, subscriber. Doesn't really know how to work YouTube too much, but, you know, radio always works. Yep. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Oh, you want to know some history about me? Uh, tell me. So where are you from? What do you do? I was born in 1959 in a small town of Poplar, Montana, the far northeastern corner of Montana. Poplar? Where does that come from? That's just the name of the town, because it was the only hospital close to my hometown of Wolf Point, Montana. So Poplar, close to Wolf Point, how far is that east, Montana? Yeah, far northeastern corner. Poplar is the county seat. Oh, nice. So wh what year were you born? 1959. Wow. So the only way you could, that was the only hospital within 50 miles. So anybody that was born was having a baby in Wolf Point. They had to drive that 30 miles. Do you remember when you were a kid, what the, what the world or economics were like? Uh, the, well, but born on an Indian reservation, you really didn't really pay much mind to that. You know, that you had, you know, you'd get your popsicles, you'd get your normal little things. There was a public pool across the street, so it was free to get in. Oh, no, I remember the public pools when we were kids in the 90s. Carmichael Park, the fear of somebody shitting in the pool all the time. That's the one thing yeah. from the Caddyshack movie, right? The Baby Ruth or whatever. Yeah. That fear was real. So how? what, what year did you leave Montana? In 1967. So 16, 15 years old? Yep. Jeez. No, 67 no, would be 60, eight. I eight was years. eight years old. Yeah. We'd moved back and forth a couple times. We moved to the Bay Area, moved back, and then moved back finally and settled in uh, East Bay, Fremont. Do you remember the difference between, like, the Indian reservation and the, the first time you realized the difference between, like, white man's world and the Indian reservation? Yeah, because here uh, commodities were called welfare. There they were called commodities. You got your free cheese, your... Food stamps, stuff like that. Exactly. Or, yeah. We always were growing up as commodities. So mm. when we came out here, you said commodities, and they were thinking, well... Benefits of some sort or... Food, yeah, extra food, clothes, commodities, normal, everyday things that you would use in your life, foods especially. And how, how many brothers and sisters did you have back then when you left the Indian Reservation? There was uh, six of us. Damn. We have three kids. So me, Kyle, Clayton, how I could not imagine having three more kids in any household. How did you live with five re uh, siblings? Well, there was me um, and five girls. So for it took the longest time for until my brother was born. So it was I had my own room. We always had big houses. Back then, it was a lot easier to live. Yeah, because we had moved so expensive. different parts of Montana. We moved to Billings, which is like the biggest city in uh, Montana, and we had a uh, big house. I mean, you had a, you got a it was a brick house. You got a basement. You got an attic. You had, I mean, a big house. I mean, it was more room than enough for all of us. And what year was that? That had to have been at least sixty-five. Sixty-five. Let's see. I want to see what the cost of living in nineteen sixty-five was. 1965, if I can type that. $1 in 1965 is equivalent, equivalent in purchasing power to about $9 today, an increasing of $8 over 57 years. The dollar had an average inflation rate of $3 or 3.9% per year. And between 1965 and today, the producing a cumulative price increase of eight, almost 800%. Damn. So, yeah, you had money went a lot farther. I remember going to the movies, and for seventy-five cents, you got in to see a, a double feature, a matin, a midday serial like Lone Ranger, um, Three Stooges, different things, cartoons. Yeah, a thing of popcorn and a black cow sucker for <laughs> seventy-five cents. I've never heard of a black cow sucker. Yeah, it's well, what's that? It's like a black, it's a brown caramel can uh, sucker. They still make them. They're called black cows. I want to see And this. we used to lick them and stick our end to the popcorn. Oh, I get it. Well, well, that's a place, apparently, in Oregon, California, and somewhere else. Black cow. Sucker. Look at images. Like this. Chocolate caramel. Mm-hmm. So they had them. Like that. 
They were like a sugar daddy, but they were called black cows back then. That's a bit racy, of course. Of course, back then, yeah. Ah, here we go. Slow poke sucker. Mm -hmm. Mm. I remember the the sugar daddies. The sugar daddy was pretty much like a black cow, just caramel. (laughs) See, the difference between when you were a kid and when I was a kid, I remember it being like $4 to go to the movies. And then you would take us, we'd see Toy Story and The Matrix the same day. And we'd be like, oh, let's skip to another one. Yeah. As long as one of us didn't have to uh, say something or do something. I remember the first time being so scared, wanting to jump out and be like, I'm not doing this. This is wrong. Um, and now I look back and I'm like, man, he's try, trying to save a buck. It was just smooth. It was smooth. Yeah. It was easy. And there was nobody trying to catch you like it was going to, you were being arrested. It was yeah. more like. I mean, I figured you get a more value for the buck. It's much I easier. remember one we used to go to Arden Way. And, oh yeah, before it got built. And we're waiting there to for the next movie to start. So we went into the arcade, and we're playing video games. You know, we're just goofing around, me, you, and your brother Kyle. And all of a sudden, I kept hearing the fire alarm go off. Oh God, I remember this. And yeah. I'm like, what is that sound? And I look over, and Kyle thought it was a change machine. So I said. Let's go. We have to go right now. What, what about the other movie? We're, We're leaving. leaving right now. Let's go. I yeah. remember you yanking me, dragging. I didn't know what and happened that, until we got into the car. And boy, Kyle's face was just, I did something. Well, yeah, it was, it was just crazy because it was just like, what? We're going I to didn't jail. Cops it are was coming. my kid that had pulled the fire alarm. Because <laughs> like, it was just a small little room. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember those rooms where it was Big as could be when when I was a kid, but nowadays you walk in and you're like, oh, like four third graders can come in here, and then somebody's rubbing butts. Yeah. Um, the and it costs a buck twenty five for a game now. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're making a killing. Yeah. But you know, there's online games that people can play on your phone, and it'll control a real live uh, claw machine, and those people are making millions of dollars. Oh yeah. It's I don't know how they wait in line or how you can only have so many machines being played at once, right? Yeah. So how much money could you possibly make with only like 30 machines and they're using cryptocurrency or uh, controllers, microcontrollers to operate these things? I've seen some of the TikToks and videos that people make on the breakdowns and how to fix them. But boy, the upkeep's got to be huge. Oh, yeah. But it's it's easy thing. uh, Who doesn't love a claw machine? But then again, back then, it was probably 100 bucks to build one make one, manufacture one, yeah. you know, early 60s, 70s for a pinball machine. Nowadays, you're looking $2,000, $3,000 with printing, uh, microcontrollers, Licen- hydraulics. Licensing to get oh, the, yeah. the person that's going to have their name on it. Oh, Gene Simmons licensed his uh, his image. What was it? I think he made more money off of the licensing of his image. Well, the same thing with the slot machines. You put your name on the slot machines and you... Even now, you see a Dean Martin machine. That means the Dean Martin uh, family estate get money off of it. And all those machines are really popular machines. And in, in the old places in Tahoe and Vegas, you go into those, and that's the machines you would see. Yeah. And everybody was skimming off the top. Yeah, licensing deal, Family Guy and Kiss, 2012, says the one word made him a millionaire, $300 million, so on and so forth. Well, your grandfather came up with Kiss Long before I'd ever heard of the band Kiss, I'd heard of it, but it was Keep It Simple Stupid. Oh yeah, we've and got the like, rings. What? And I, he was a big he was a big guy for acronyms. He liked yeah, oh yeah, Kiss or uh, there was the See You Next Tuesday, which was uh, Can't Understand Normal, normal Thinking. thinking yeah, I love that word, but uh, nowadays it's a bit racy. No, yeah. <laughs> when I was twenty, I unless thought unless you're I, British. Oh yeah, unless you're British. But when I was a kid, I thought it was, oh, it's going to be one of my tattoos. You know, like we had an uncle or somebody who had that rooster below his knee. And boy, just the idea of having this word tattooed on my arm was like the coolest thing. Yeah. And I was like, I got older and I'm like, the keep it simple, stupid thing. He had all the golden rings that were pressed, you know, 24 karat gold. I was like, he had a lot of money back then. It was an enterprise. I oh, mean, yeah. It was an enterprise. He, he was born in like the 40s, right? He was like 25 yeah. years older than you? Yep, yeah, 1938. Yeah, so I wonder, if, what's the cost of living 1938? Yeah, he grew up in a small town, too, out in Rio Linda, whereas I grew up in a small town of 2,500 people in Montana. So Rio Linda and, and it was probably the same size. So... Snapshot below. Harvard tuition in 1938 was $420 a year. Yep. A gallon of gas was 10 cents. 
That's 400 times less, 500 times less right now. Yeah, average income was 1731 a year. That's how much some people make in a week, two weeks. Yeah, a week, two weeks, some people make in a day. That's crazy. A house costs $4,000. So you could save up back then, you could save up two years of your living wage for the average person. Now you have to save up 10 years to buy a house. Yeah, $3,900 is some people's rent. I, I understand, yeah. Well, our rents, we were paying, what, seventeen, sixteen, fifty. Yep. Last year before the pandemic bullshit. And then all of a sudden, we got hit with so many up uh, rental increases. Yeah. And even mom was saying, you know, 10% a year. And I'm like, there's ways around that if you're not in a lease or licensed. There's Well, they say the fair market value. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, what market are they talking about? Not mine. <laughs> I know it's California's fair market value. And that's determined by people who already own multiple properties and don't give a shit about what they're renting them for. And somebody's going to pay that price. Well, that's why California started the rent you know, renters association, all the, you know, advocates for lowering rent. Yeah. The, the problem is that it's, here, let's see this 1938 cost of living 3,900 income 17 movie ticket was 25 cents back in 1938. Yeah. Jesus. And it was only 75 cents when you were, you that, went? no, that included the candy and oh, the popcorn. Okay. And sometimes you can get the soda Holy and at, shit. at the mid, the intermission, they'd have a, Ticket drawing and games, and you could get up on the stage and do a little. Uh, oh, it was entertainment stick. back then. Oh yeah, you you. you it, know. That's a movie. And you would win tickets to Ben Franklin's was where you know right on the main street or Woolworths, and you would take your little <laughs> ticket. You'd go with my sister won a pillow one year. You know it was, and then we would help clean up the theater afterwards, and then you would find money or you know what somebody I mean? somebody would drop a ring or and something something yeah. That so, you would actually try and find the owner of yeah in a small town small like town that, yeah. yeah couldn't just pawn it off in a town of five million people yeah now that town is still there it's small. It has a casino at the end. I so what's the name again? Wolf Point. Wolf Point. Sorry, Wolf Point. I couldn't see. Huh. Okay. So Wikipedia. Let's see what it says. So it says Wolf Point is a city in the county seat of Roosevelt County, Montana. Population 2,500. So only 2,500 still on the 2020 census. Yeah. So down 4%. So people obviously moved out from 2010. Four. Peak Indian Fort Peck Indian Reservation. Yeah. I'm reading from this really big screen at a far distance. I need my glasses. Uh, horse Stampede held every year. Oh yeah, second week went to July. the rodeo every year. It makes the Folsom Rodeo Oldest look like rodeo a rodeo uh, in Montana. Been called the granddaddy of Montana rodeos. Oh yeah, wow. Every year. Yep. Yeah. Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, uh, Hopalong Cassidy, all those guys were riding in that rodeo. How, how long has it been since you've been back there? Oh, I would say since 82. 82. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would you remember it if you went back there? Um, I would think so once I got on the main street. My mom go, had gone there every year, and she said slowly but surely the main street stayed the same, a lot of boarded up places, but on the whole it was still the same. I'll keep that. History began a trading post in the 1860s at the confluence of the Wolf Creek and the Missouri River. Farming began in the area as early as 1874. The Great Northern Railway arrived in 87. Wolf Point Incorporated in 15 became early county seat in the 1919. Oh, yeah. We used to swim in Wolf Creek when I was a kid. I want to see a map of this. And you would... You could, geography. My grandfather lived right there at the edge of town, and you walked down that r dirt road, and you run to the Missouri River, Milk River. All beaten... Pint on tap, what is that? It's on tap. Yeah. There was rooms for rent, etc. That's crazy. I never, and that's 1941. I don't think I've ever looked up where you lived, because you never really talked about it when we were kids. It wasn't really a, a big thing. We were always so busy, three kids. I can understand running around. It's never really about you. I got two kids at home. It's never really about me. No. Like two-year-old or my five-year-old asked what I do today. Oh, I build things. Not really, but still, <laughs> that's about as easy as they can understand. When she grows up, she'll probably ask for like a, what is it, projects? Do they even do projects in school, you think, anymore? Um, I would hope they would. Yeah. Some sort. But you know, it would be like always, you know, you, the day before, oh, by the way, I have a project exactly. for tomorrow. Oh, my daughter. The teacher just told me. Oh, yeah, my daughter waits until the teacher tells me there's something in her backpack. Because the teachers now in preschool put them in the backpack for the parents to look through. And I'm like, why am I looking through a backpack? I was never taught to look through a backpack. 
unless there's a problem. If I'm missing something, look through a kid's backpack. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they probably grabbed it off the counter, et cetera. But not like, okay, here we go. There's a project that I should be working on for six out of the seven days until it's due. Now, all of a sudden, we got to crunch all your words, your numbers, everything the night before. Yeah, do, you, do the project for them. Exactly. Oh, mom used to do that all the time. And uh, that was a big problem because I would, after the first time I complained about it, she would come up and be like, oh, do you need help? I'm like, well, three plus seven is not seven. Yeah. And she'd be like, oh, let me show you. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm looking behind her at the toys Kyle's playing with or somebody's playing with. I'm like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Got real good at the weasel on that. But man, the, the thing that racks my brain is from, it's a short distance in human evolution, 70 years. You know, you were born, uh, I was born, f what, 40 years after you. Yeah. The cost of living, the cost of items have gone up purely, not because of money or the world advancing. It's purely because we say it holds more value. Yeah. A, it's a, house, more. a house is the same. If you never did anything and you paid $3,200 for it and did nothing, kept up normal upkeep, it, it increases value, but you didn't do anything to it. Yeah, if, if, if it's just been dusted, you know, and like oiled, great. It should still be what you paid for it. I understand that money circulates, more money's put into, you know, I get that. But when you tell me that milk has only gone up 10 times, but a house has gone up 4,000 times in value. Yeah, there's a, a famous quote from Frank Zappa. The price of meat has just gone up, but your old lady, she just went down. <laughs> you know, and you stop and think about it, man, human flesh is worse worth less than it's over time oh, absolutely yes yeah absolutely the world the world has gone into a uh well money rules the world we all know that yeah. I, I think we can all agree money they say it can't buy you happiness it can buy you comfort and the ability to skirt any bullshit around you that's why people hire uh people in pakistan to run you know advertising for them i don't want to deal with it i don't want to spend the time here you go you know dollar 70 an hour some of these people are that's how they skirt some of the laws because they're not employing anybody that's in the United States. Their hustle. Yeah, that's their hustle. And then you got all the the cryptocurrency, the traders, the market people. Uh, it gets alluring, you know. Everyone's sitting at home right now, and you got the what do they call it? The Great Reset. Nobody wants to work. It's not that nobody wants to work. People want to work for home from home because other people are doing it. All right. And they're getting paid because they're like, oh well, if there's a slack in one opportunity or one job title there's a demand in another you know when there's demand in one there's demand in another but somebody's filling that demand by paying more so they're they're earning a little less but they have a lot more ability to grow that that portion so i, I we're having trouble hiring a front desk admin we have the the guy who we just had another call no show today boy only makes 16 bucks an hour i get it it's not a lot of money but he was guaranteed if he could get his shit together, we'd pay him 19 within 90 days. Not one week, one late, one fuck up, one problem. Not one day did he not come in smelling like weed and spraying himself. The, the work ethic is different in some of the kids that are 20 to 25 now. Yeah. Somehow I avoided it by five years. I don't know what y'all did. I yeah. appreciate it, though. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. Working at the same company for 26 years, you've seen from when I started... Oh, yeah. six bucks an hour to somebody that's making 16 bucks an hour. But they start because, you know, they fought for the, the fight for 15 to go up. So people walk in the door. How does that feel? Because I never experienced somebody walking in the door and getting paid as much as me over a 15 year difference. What was that like? Well, no, it's I was already making more than that. You know, I'm making five bucks an hour more. But still, it's, I felt bad for the people that had started prior yeah, because well, yeah, at they, some they point they just got a raise for sixteen bucks, and then some snotty nosed kid, uh, millennial, doesn't want to do anything. Millennial, yeah. And uh, no, they're moronials. Oh, moronials! I get. Ah. I mean, I got to work for this money. I got to show up on time. I got to, you know. And it's no different. If you get hired, you're you're supposed to do something. It's a it's a it's a contract. It's it's and a, now if you want to make money as a, a stand up statue. Say, Spray yourself sober and go to San Francisco. Well, now they're doing that everywhere. It's just they call it homeless. They're a little less shiny. That's about it. <laughs> but some, a lot of them have, aren't getting paid, but still. There's a lot. If you, I'm just saying, you could lay on any sidewalk and there are people just throwing money at you. There's, just, oh, there's a lot of astronauts in the world now, too. They're taking up space just standing there. 
So you got to think, you know. <laughs> I wish I could, you know. I sometimes want, wonder why didn't I think of that or this or that. And you know, you can panhandle and make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, easily. Yeah, it's it's pride. It's a difference in pride in people. Yeah. I would add, I will do anything for fifty dollars. I I know my worth, and it's not much. There's a lot of ways to make money. If I ever stop doing what I'm doing, I'll panhandle. I'll still make ten G's a month by sitting and drinking water that people hand me. I ran out of gas one time downtown and I sat there and I sat there because I didn't want to go up and ask, hey, you got a, you know, some change so I can put gas in my boat here that's going to... And finally, I'm like, hey, you know, I, I got to go home. Yeah. Well, here, here, here's $10. And back then, $10 filled your tank up. Oh, yeah. But it, it's, it's pride. It's a lot of pride. That's, I, I, I would rather see in my parking lot over there by us where we live Safeway. Yeah. You have on Saturday and Sunday... A Russian guy plays violin, has his violin open. And he, problem I've given is, him his, I have given him some He money. only knows one song. Yeah. And it's just, but he's not asking for money. He's doing a service. There's, there there's was another guy one playing guy. Her, uh, uh, accordion. Yeah, there's one guy who played a violin that was beautiful. And then I found out, I saw a story on, on uh, Good Day 31 that these are electronic violins. And that must not, be. He only they're not playing anything. It's one song that's preloaded, or it's two songs if they have a, a fancier, shinier one. I guess you can preload it with other music, but there's only like one heartfelt song that people are actually donating money to. That's uh, an emotional tie. Oh, yeah. But it gets a lot of people. I gave this guy like forty five dollars in ones that I had. I was like, man, it's Sunday morning. I'm going to get some milk for the kids. This guy got me. I was like, you know, he's doing something with his life. He's, he's, he's like, ah, oh, I got a talent. I'm going to do it. And he got me. And I, I saw him the next time. I'm like, you sly motherfuckers. No, no English. No, no English. Yeah. I, I asked but the him, thing, is that the, the thing only? me was great. He understood. Oh, well, yeah, he, he said that perfect English. And I'm like, oh, you got me. Yeah. But it, at least he's, he's clean. He's, the, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he may a, not have a family. He may have a family. But the thing is. It probably took him a lot to come out there. I, these, I respect the hustle. I respect the hustle too yeah. because it's honest. He's yeah. not, he's not there's, shaking people down. There's a lot of those kids that are now robbing people for their shoes. Mm-hmm. Did you see that? The stabbings in, in England and whatnot over people's clothes? Yeah, they're behind times. Yeah, they were cr- doing that here in the 80s. Oh, it's so stupid. It's like everywhere progresses differently. You got a lot of people. You know, we had that, um, what was it, the weed bar that was here at the spa. Yep. And you would assume that this is going to be some less favorable characters for the area. You know, Carmichael's supposed to be like some very upper class people. But then you had, you know, I would call them North Highlanders. I used to live out there. It was all part of it. And uh, man, they were the nicest customers. Oh, the yeah. absolute nicest. Respectful. Guy. It wasn't their area. There weren't their people. Nobody was here for trouble. When there was trouble, they were apologetic. They, they paid for their mistakes. They, money was good. And they never had a problem with people. Anyone, hey, ask the question, absolutely, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. It wasn't anything dangerous. It wasn't anything crazy. The guys just wanted to smoke a little weed, and it's legal in California. Here you go. Good for them. But then you get the people who are robbing you for your freaking shoes when they could just ask for some shoes at Foot Locker, and they'll probably be like, oh, you know, we have a raffle today. Here you go. You could win some shoes. You won. Oh, exactly. Something. That's the thing with me. If, I'm, if I ever hit it rich, zillions zillions musk money i would have homes <laughs> oh yeah well, a, of a course. compound you know oh yeah but the first thing Professional you do ball washers uh all that stuff like that you know oh yeah you big time golfer huh yep never played a game in your life <laughs> yeah we went out you know we went out to hagen oaks a few times that's lot of driving time. that's driving no we played that one time and uh, oh we used to play at sunrise the nine holes because we were mm-hmm. always too fat and lazy to play 18 exactly and it was freaking expensive because then they'd have a caddy offer to you and you could rent the the cart and it was everything was pay by per, uh, subscription and that's a whole other thing they get you on. Yeah, you could pay. have a million dollar golf club and still suck. Oh God, yeah. So but, I, the, but they wanted it. Now I, I wanted it so bad because it was the coolest thing, right? And I had kids in high school. They were like, "Oh, you golf?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Everyone's got their polos and their little hats with their French. What was it? Uh, fairy tips that were coming out. Uh, frosted tips. That's what mm-hmm. it was. Oh man, it was the coolest thing back in like 2006, 2007 to be a golf player. Oh, you play golf? Absolutely. What yeah. you drive? Cha. What's your, what's your, your yeah, cha. Everyone's got to dip in. You know, what, what's your uh, 
What's your range? Yeah. What's your range? What's your, what's your range? Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that it's 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 all how you perceive a person. It's cr- it's crazy. Just the, I've been looking at the difference, and gasoline got sparked this whole thing for me. And I was like, how the hell? I, I drive electric, so you know, a little conceited here. But the uh, the idea of spending five dollars a gallon makes me want to burn a car. Oh, it does. I mean, it's like okay, twenty. You know, back in when I first dro- drove, when somebody said, "Hey, I got five dollars for gas," you're like, "Cool." Now you're like, okay, what am I going to do with a gallon of gas? It's, it, I can't even start the car for a gallon of gas. Well, there was a TikTok, uh, you know, the video where it showed a guy asking somebody for change and then putting it in, you know, like, oh, okay, can I get uh, two cents to start my car or whatever? No, no, that's not how it was. This guy, the video I saw, the guy had bought $10 in gas or something and asked for a refund after he used the gas. And it's like, because your petrol sucks. And he makes a big old stink about it. He's like, you don't want me to come in here. I sue you. I sue you. It's lower quality. And he's like, just give him his 10 bucks back. And he's like, huh, come take your petrol out the car, bitch. Yeah. And, and they, didn't, they took all the petrol out with the pump and whatnot. And he's like, ah, turns the car over, doesn't start. And then he asked for change to get the car started. And it was just really funny. But the idea of paying almost 100 times what you would pay 30 years ago it just it doesn't seem legitimate. It seems like there is an inflation that is controlled by because I, I sell things, so I understand like when I buy something for twenty dollars, I want a hundred for it. I feel like I got it for a good deal, and I could make a hundred. That was my I, grandfather's motto. I put, buy low, sell high. Yeah, there's a lot of people that say that, but I say it's the value of which I'm comfortable of making, and so I get a lot of things for twenty dollars that I'll sell for forty. Sometimes I give people a deal. Like I gave away a pair of AirPod Pros because a guy, a guy specifically was like, "Hey man, can you help me out today? That'd make my day." And I was like, "All right, cool. Here you go." You ask me at the right time. I'm not the most generous person in the world, but there's some times where I'm like, "All right, cool. You just hit me at the right time." This guy got me right then. He's like, "I, I don't got the money, but I really love a pair. If you could help me out." Nobody ever asks like that. They're like, "But you could give me a pair, right?" I spend a lot of money here. I've, I've paid your bills. I've done this. I've been a loyal person for X, Y, and Z years. Those are the people I say, nah, I, I, I've never seen you a day in my life. I grew up where you had a lot of friends that you would do favors for. You were always the favor guy. Everyone came for car stuff to you. Everyone came to help and need a, a couch or whatever. And I, I learned real quick that that never benefited you. No. It gave you a good feeling. But boy, that burned me out to the idea of the the homie hookup. But I tried a couple of times when I started my company. And I was like, all right, you know, you want $20 out of like $100 my cost, great. You know, I'll pay to to fix your stuff. Or I'll turn it upside down for you and do it for free for the first couple hours. And then it turned out to a 10-hour project. Boy, I've tried to tell a lot of people how that can waste your time and your energy. You never... you. Never ever get back the same amount. No. So that I do things and not with the expectation of not getting something back because it's never going to be a fair value. But watching The Godfather as many times I did, when the time is right, they will help you. Remember when I fell and broke my uh, kneecap? You mean when you tried to break into your home you didn't have keys for yet? Yeah, that's the home. <laughs> but people came. They took time off from work. They showed, you know what I mean? Like, Carol was there a lot, right, at that time? She lived across the street. But the thing was, people came without me calling them. They were there and like, oh, okay. So then maybe that covers the favors I did. Not completely, but enough. You know what I mean? The people that I helped the least showed up. What what do you expect at your funeral? You think a a big turnout? Um, It's hard to say. Yeah. Bigger than than, uh, Grandma Bell's? Oh, I would imagine. Uh, You know, I know a lot of people. Yeah, you know, and I, that's what I was talking. Me and your mother were talking about with her funeral. Mm-hmm. It was just over. Yeah, it she was didn't. Quick. She didn't. Yes, yeah, she didn't want it at the clubhouse. But the thing is, if we would have had the reception at the clubhouse, mm-hmm. we would have. Everybody would have visited everything like that. The, but we had it been, at the church. Hey, you got to go. No more cl- seconds. Cl- clubhouse would have been more personal as, as far as the reception. That's as what the reception, I, I tried yeah. to tell Al. Yeah, he did. It's we're not a service. Reception are two things different. And you can do, a, you could have done a wake before the service. 53 people. 
come on. I know my mother knew more people than that. Oh, a lot. But she was. She helped. She's talking COVID. about people who helped people. That woman was a woman of service. There, it, COVID. Yeah. But, you know that's the only that's, thing that's I get. That's a good think excuse. Of. People, but that's it's what still they a, were using. Yeah, that's a you good know what excuse. I mean? oh, that's the new thing. But it you know, wasn't there a old, lady? My, my kid's not doing too. Is not feeling good. But okay, I'd buy that now. There was COVID. a lady. Okay, stay home. Uh, what was it? Uh, one of the relatives. Somebody got money to travel from Montana or somewhere, but just kept the money and didn't come. Yeah, from Idaho. That's crazy. From Utah. That is crazy. With yep. all the free money that's rolling around in the government and all this shit right now to take from your family on some real stupid shit, you got to be hard up for cash. Or have other issues. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't want to yeah. say Other issues that. sometimes. I mean, it's something that you know, when you reality hits you, you're like, oh, wow, I missed it. Yeah. The, the idea, like, I was thinking about Just my... Just seeing it, but it was so quick. My, at my funeral, no funeral, like, no big deal. Burn my ass, throw me over a bridge. Yeah, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, maybe that's why we still have your grandparents up in the closet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Let's not get started on that topic, because... I mean, that, Let's throw them over a bridge. That's they can wash I, out to different canals. I, I said just drive through a reel and open the window and let them go. Yeah. You know how happy he would be to be eaten by little pigs and shit? Not even known. Exactly. Not He'd even take my little, do- my little dog puppy. Throw her. <laughs> Dude. How many dead bodies do you have in the closet, literally? Uh, no skeletons. <laughs> I, they're burned. I know. There's probably bone pigments, though. So technically, yeah. there are some skeletons in your closet. But... By yeah. real standards, there are skeletons yeah. in my father's closet. It's hard to say. Yeah. Have you ever looked through the dust and just like kind of caressed the bits? No. No? Okay. I'd never even like cleaning my fireplace out. <laughs> I could just imagine taking a sifter. Some people, you Somebody's never got know. a molar or something in there. I bet wouldn't burn. Or do they? That's why they stop people from wildfires from um, pilfering. Oh, uh, body parts, stuff like that? No, just in general. you your your jewelry box burned down. That stuff's not going to get destroyed by the uh, fire. Well, it, it, some of it would melt, like uh, mm. low melting points on like silvers and gold. But it still would be right there when you're sifting through. Oh yeah, I mean, like, what, I watch faces would burn, but the watches probably wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. so it's 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 like grave robbing. It's I understand grave robbing because some people like throw things into the mm-hmm. the dirt. But then again, you could also just take a uh, what is it a uh, metal detector because they don't bury them that deep it's not six feet anymore some of those things are like three and a half feet and they just seal the casket with a lock key and ir have you seen oh, i want to show you something that'll There's rock a, your world i mean the, the morticians of today are a lot different than morticians of old some of these are young people the person that did the, the cremation of ground bell caskets she, she with young yeah what is it caskets with exits inside I want to say internal escape. I'm not used to this keyboard. Forgive me, everyone. Let's see. Is there too much pressure to escape? I don't know. I want to see it. Is it possibly buried live in a coffin? Yeah. There are caskets that have, if you get resurrected or come back to life, and uh, you can leave. Yeah, escape coffins where you can leave. Buried alive. Was anyway. They were, yeah. So scared that they, yeah, no, like they, they invented, died. Yeah. They invented something. Eighteenth yeah. century, you know, scratch marks inside a coffin, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, Edgar coffin Allan Poe with locks inside. What is it? Coffin hmm. lock, right here, is a slang term for a blind panel connector, often used for scientific construction and joint stage decks. Or nope, okay. Oh, well, I'm not gonna find it right now. But basically, there is ones that people believe. Their loved ones will come back to life and they can get out because they'll know the password or know the lock. That is a mind of a crazy person to me. You think your loved one's coming back to life, that they're going to know your six digit pin and be able to reanimate and hit the button. And Some then people, get... they say, sit with their loved ones dead for a while. Yeah. That Debbie's brother sat, the dad sat with him for a week. He was dead. He didn't know it. He just talked to him because they obviously didn't carry on very much conversation for a whole week until somebody came up and said, hey, do you realize he's dead? Okay, that's a bit. There's mental instability there. <laughs> it's I understand. Dementia. Oh, no, no. I understand. <laughs> Say my wife died. Just randomly died peacefully in her sleep or whatever. I'd probably lay there until the warmth left her body. I could understand that. You know what I mean? Like just, just that caress. 
Yeah. But that, the idea of being like, oh, she's not dead. She'll come back. And she, you know my wife's cold anyway. Cause she's got the iron deficiency. But man, the idea of being like, let's carry on a conversation pops until your jaw falls off. Yeah, that's that's mental instability. Yeah, there's nothing there. It's not, there's a... There's a literal problem there. Yeah, <laughs> but like the Walking Dead shows, oh. that they, you know, you know that that's the show. Uh, yeah. the, well, the, uh, everything about those shows just gives me the. I don't like horror stuff. Ever since you showed me Freddy, what was it, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street in '95? Yeah, you son of a bitch. It was a scary movie. It was. Thank you for a five-year-old. I'll never forget that. I used to have nightmares of just like time freezing in place. And Freddie popping out of a mirror and like stabbing people in the back. Yeah. And like I couldn't speak or talk because I'm frozen in time. You messed me up. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, part 27. Oh, it's yeah. It's a popular movie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see in 2032. Yep. You know, uh, Pandemic Six, how it's going. All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up here. We got about 40 minutes on tape. We'll see how it goes and we'll, you know, post it and it'll be on YouTube, Castbox, and I, what is it? iTunes Podcast will yep. be coming out this week. Appreciate it, getting to know my pops and the new studio space. Well, thanks for having me here. It's yeah. a really nice studio, and I'm yeah. glad I'm a follower. And if anybody's not a follower, they definitely need to join in and, and listen. There's a lot of conversations. We always take uh, suggestions to oh, help. Yeah. Comment below. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you very much.